Hi, this is uh, Bob from Hobby Concepts, and today I'm going to build this Tamiya flatbed trailer kit. It's a pretty straightforward kit. Building the kit is not um, not a big deal, but what I am going to do is add wireless trailer lights along with these side running lights. And I've done a little video on the wireless lights, but this is going to be a full install, show you how to do it. It works really great, so we'll go through building the trailer and adding the wireless trailer lights. Of course, this goes along with the globe liner I just finished. If you haven't watched it, watch part four of the globe liner build to see how the lights go in there. Uh, it turned out great. Uh, I'm excited to do it, so let's get started. Well, you remember my globe liner from my uh, globe liner build series. And uh, finish the truck. What's the next thing to do? Well, probably the next thing to do is a trailer. So today we're going to look at this Tamiya flatbed trailer kit and we're going to build it and we're going to add some uh, options to it. It's uh, a typical great Tamiya kit, packed super well. The trailers are have a lot of metal. Uh, there's the frame rails, uh, the side rail. This flatbed trailer has this really nice wood decking that is actually comes in two colors. That's pretty sweet. And typical Tamiya kit, uh, all kinds of bags marked A, B, C, D. So I've got my my muffin tin here all marked. I'll dump those into. So I'm going to go ahead and unpack this kit and then show you some of the options I'm going to put on it. Have the uh, trailer unpacked. The first thing I did was kind of flip through the instruction sheet and I decided right away that I want to paint uh, the outer rails to match my globe liner. I just got a lot of compliments on that light blue pearl. So I'm going to paint the frame pieces that go around the outside edge and the headboard uh, that goes up at the front of the trailer with that um, light blue pearl. I thought about painting the the chassis rails but decided they're just too far underneath to really show much so uh, I'm going to go ahead and paint those before I start assembling the trailer. Let me talk about the options I'm going to do a little bit. Well the first thing is uh, if you've watched my videos you know my loathing for the the uh, bronze bushings, so I've got a, a ball bearing kit to replace those. I use ball bearings in the axles. And then I'm going to add lights. So I've got my RC vehicle light kit, and this is the same one I used in the globe liner. We're going to put one in the trailer too, and we're going to tie them together so all the lights work from the same radio. And I've got some really cool things to show you about that. In order to use that, I need a second receiver, and I need a little battery box. This is a battery box that holds four AA batteries. And then I've got an on-off switch that I'll put down in the bottom of the trailer so I can uh, shut that whole system off when I'm not using it without unplugging anything. So, uh, light kit, receiver, battery box, and switch. And I've got some uh, additional LEDs, but I actually don't have them yet. I just ordered them today, so they'll probably be here as I'm working on the trailer, and I'll show you how I'm going to going to do all that. So we'll have uh, turn signals, tail lights, brake lights, and side marker lights. As you can see, I painted uh, the parts that I wanted to paint with the uh, to me a uh, blue pearl beautiful color and uh, the rear bumper parts I painted with uh, with aluminum uh, so they would match the the way the globe liner looks and these long frames of course are the are the side frames so now that I've got these parts painted I can go ahead and get started with the build as we uh, get started on this um, it's important to note there's a back and a front uh, the back has got this outlet hole for light wiring you can see I mounted three of the cross braces and the two ends. And the cross braces have got a slot underneath them so that you can run wiring down the trailer. The bed lays right on top of these and that's a handy feature outlet so the wiring can go to the bumpers. And uh, no 
no big uh, complicated thing here. The next part is going to be to put these frame rails on. And they're going to mount like this. Again, I've got to remove this blue trim. And they bolt through the deck and through another cross brace up underneath. So there's a few more cross braces and a few more bolts. I'm going to go ahead and put those in and just get this put together. Uh, you can see after step two, <coughs> it uh, is starting to take shape. It's important to note that they only use a couple of cross braces to hold these on to start with. So many of these holes are not filled yet. Now it's time to install the side rails. And the side rails use the same cross brace here with a captured nut to bolt on. So I'm going to go ahead and bolt those on in just these two places where the, where the cross brace is. And I'll be back. So I bolted on my side rail um, just in these two places. And uh, you'll notice that Tamiya has elongated holes in these rails, which is very unusual for Tamiya because they're precision fit. You don't need it. But since the decking is real wood, there's actually maybe some tolerance issues that you can slide these in or out a little bit to fit your deck perfectly. Since they use a captured lock nut, it's just a matter of loosening four of them and sliding this in or out when we place the, the wood decking. So now it's time to do the two end braces here. They will mount like that. But right now, they're only going to use two screws to, uh, to put that on. These screws are still empty because there's other items that fit in here we'll get to in a minute. So I'm going to put those on. The final step on the deck are these corners. And they just mount with a tapping screw in each corner here. And those are also slotted, so later when we do the wood decking we can adjust them. So there's our completed deck assembly with the frame rails. You can see my my uh, blue paint on the rails. And now it's time to do some of these accessories on the bottom. So I will set that aside and we will take a look at those. So I thought I'd uh, show putting these landing legs together. It's a kind of an interesting step. The spring just pulls through here and it's important to uh, I have a pair of tweezers for this because there's a lot of small little parts down inside here. The other thing that's nice to have is a magnetic screwdriver. This is my Tamiya screwdriver and it allows me to get in there and hold my screw because it goes down inside quite a ways. And this just drops in to this housing. Same thing, the good old tweezers. Pull this over the top. And another one of these washers drops over it. And another screw. So when this assembly is done, gives you, pulls the leg back in. This assembly bolts down on top of here and you wind up with this. And that retracts the legs. Uh, the only thing about bolting the cover on is one of the screws is, a, is an Allen head screw in this position to keep the pin from sliding out. So I'll finish assembling that front part of the trailer, this 
this piece drops in here, and this one drops in here, and we're going to put bolts through into these um, plates on the back side. This piece just drops on like this, and it's important to notice that the the pin is on the further back position, and then these legs just bolt on to the sides here. So I'm going to go ahead and bolt all this together. I always like this tricky little mechanism to operate the legs. Um, pretty straightforward to assemble. These just have a bushing that pulls in and a screw that drops down through the top. So you wind up with something like this. Um, I haven't mentioned it before, but I'll mention it now. Is you always want to use Loctite on the metal to metal parts. Um, not the parts that screw together where the screw goes into the plastic, but trailers vibrate too. Not as much as trucks, but they will vibrate apart just from a rough road. So make sure you use Loctite on everything. And one of the things about the trailer kits is they don't come with Loctite. The truck kits do, and usually there's plenty left over. So this assembly just goes together like this. This one does the same thing. Bushing drops in here. Screw goes up from the bottom. And then this piece just covers it and screws in. So I'll finish putting that together. Do I mention this or not? Yes, I'm going to mention this because I made an error in building this. I built a hundred of these, but I was so intent on talking about using this hole as an alignment for the back and the front that I forgot that these two holes belong on this side. Which means I built this upside down. It's actually an easy thing to do. I want to point it out. The first step here it says note. Very small that these go on that side. I forgot so I've got to disassemble this complete deck, flip it over, put it back together again. Uh, don't be like Bob. Make sure that those two holes are on this side when you build it. So this will take me a couple minutes, but I'll get it back together here real quick. Well, now you can see why it's important to get those on the right side, because this mounts like this. Use a tapping screw here in the middle. And a couple of bolts on the outside. So I'll go ahead and get this mounted down. The next step is this little mechanism. Our piece with the ball joint just mounts up underneath here. And it just slides. And it's important to get these little bevels in between the arms. And then this bolts down. Go ahead and do that. Okay, so you can see how this works now. Our coupler backs in and bumps into this. Moves this ball, which moves this one. And so our legs are out. Truck backs in, legs retract. This, all I have to do is just attach this in between here, and that'll be complete. Since the rear end builds exactly the same as the globe liner um, that this is for, you can just go check out um, part number one of the globe liner video to see how this goes together. Really, the only difference is there's no box structure and there's a bolt on each side instead of one long bolt. Um, shocks build exactly the same. The axles, uh, of course, are just a straight little axle. The only thing to watch out for is that one side has a little lip on it and one side doesn't. So you want to get those as a pair. And the axles just, again, I've got ball bearings in here. They just have a little flange they drop in there. And then 
that just goes over it. I like to pull on those to make sure I got in the flange correctly. And then a single bolt holds this together until you can get it mounted on the on the trailer. So no magic here. I'm going to go ahead and um, bolt this all together and then I'll have my trailer standing on its wheels. I also assembled the tires and wheels again exactly the same as a globe liner. Uh, three bolts hold them together. So I'm going to go ahead and finish assembling this and I can stand this upright. Okay, so normally at this point I would uh, put the wheels on this trailer and flip it over and work on the deck. But I want to do the lighting first while I can still lay this upside down. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add wireless trailer lights. And I've done a little video on this, but I haven't shown a complete installation. So um, that's what I'm going to do here. So the parts required for that are this RC vehicle light set, um, a receiver, a battery box, and a switch. Now, since there's no battery in the trailer, that's why we need this to run the receiver and the light. So I'll have the, the battery box go down here underneath. Uh, the light kit can also fit down here underneath. And uh, so can the receiver. So basically everything will be contained in the bottom of the trailer down in here. Um, if you remember on my uh, globe liner, this works the headlights and the marker lights. So on the trailer, this will work the tail lights and the marker lights also. So when I flip this, the lights on the truck and the trailer will go on at the same time. The turn signals, of course, are automatic with the turn signals, and this will do the truck and the trailer at the same time. And the brake lights, uh, again, will, are automatic and will do the truck and the trailer at the same time. So in order to do that, uh, I, what I'll do is I'm going to kind of lay some of this stuff out here on the, on the bench first. Um, and show you exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to start by installing the lenses in these, which are going to be uh, red, orange, and red, and then we'll work on the tail, getting the tail lights organized in those. What I've done here is I've unplugged the fog lights. We don't need those. The front turn signals, we don't need those. The blue lights, we don't need those. So I've got left the tail lights the headlights and the turn signals. Um, now, since I unplugged the fog lights, I've got a couple of nice 5mm LEDs which fit the Tamiya holes. Uh, if you remember on the globe liner, I used a hot glue gun to just glue in the smaller LEDs, but I may as well use these big ones since I've got them. And yes, they're white, but since I'm shooting through an orange lens, it does not matter. So now I've got my turn signals that actually fit. So I'm going to put in my turn signal. I'm going to put my headlight in here. So when the headlights come on, I'll have a nice outside tail light. And then I'll put my brake lights in this spot. So I'm going to go ahead and put that together. There's what the looks like with the cover on, and that's what that looks like before I put the cover on. And the cover just holds everything down. So that takes care of those two assemblies. Okay, in order to uh, to bind this receiver, in order to test everything, I need to bind this receiver to the transmitter. So to do that, I'll plug in a bind plug to the receiver. And I put batteries in here, so I'll plug this in. It's flashing quickly. So now on the transmitter, I'll just hold this down, hold this bind button in, and turn this on. It'll say binding, and now the button is flashing slowly. So I just pull the bind plug, pull the power, shut this off. Turn this back on, power it up, and I have a servo here just so I can test it. Okay, so now this receiver is bound to the transmitter. Now on the globe liner, here's what happens. Sometimes when you bind a second receiver, 
the, glow, the truck will work just fine. Sometimes it'll unbind the first receiver. If that happens, you got to go back and bind them both at the same time. I'll probably have to do that. I'll, I'll go through that operation later, but right now all I care about is getting all the trailer lights working. So I've got this bound to it and uh, I'm ready to go. Well, two things I want to do before I install everything. One of them is to add a switch to this. So I'm just going to cut this and add this switch in line, basically just like that. So I'll have this switch uh, mounted in the side frame of the trailer to turn the power off and on. And the second thing I want to do is tap into one of the headlight leads. Remember, those are the ones that turn the tail lights on and off, and they're also going to do the marker lights. So I'll do the same thing I did before on the globe liner, and that's just pick a spot here, and I'll tap in some extra wires solder these back together with another wire coming out and that will run up to the upper deck where I'm going to add a bunch of marker lights. So I'm going to go ahead and solder these together and I'll use some of this uh, little tiny shrink wrap to cover everything up. I know it looks a mess right now but it'll, it'll be obvious in a minute. Alright, I got that all soldered up. only took a couple of minutes. So what I've done here, as I mentioned, is I put a switch in so I can turn my receiver off and on. And I tapped in to one of the headlights these two extra wires, which I will run up to the trailer deck to run some more marker lights. And I've got my lights installed, so let's see how everything works. I can turn my radio on. I'll turn my transmitter on. The lights will come on in a test. I've got my turn signals, excellent, brake lights, excellent, and my headlights. Now the same switches work the same things on the globe liner, so I should have nice lights on my trailer and truck from the same transmitter. These output leads, channel 1 plugs into uh, channel 1, channel 2 plugs into channel 3, which is our throttle and channel 3 plugs into channel 6 on the receiver which is the switch right here. So now all I have to do is install this in the trailer. I didn't need to extend these light wires like I did on the globe liner because I can mount this close to the back of the trailer. And uh, yeah, pretty simple. We'll go ahead and maybe uh, get this installed in the trailer. I have got my equipment mounted. So you can see I just stuck the box down with double sticky tape, used a couple of the Tamiya clips to hold the wires down, um, tied off the extra wires. I could have cut them but I figured I'd leave them in one piece. Drilled a hole for the switch Then for the battery box I used a pretty low-tech but very effective method. I drilled two holes in the side frame and ran, ran a tie wrap around it. So if I need to change the batteries, you just clip the tie wrap and then put another one back on. And then the receiver is double sticky taped on there. I've got my two additional wires running up here for the uh, marker lights, which I will do next. So that completes the bottom side. I'm going to uh, put the tires and wheels on and uh, flip it over and we'll do the top side. As I suspected, my uh, globe liner no, no longer recognizes my transmitter, so I've got to rebind it. And what I'm going to have to do is bind both of these at the same time. So I'm going to pop the body off of this, and I'll show you how to do that. And then both receivers will work. But if you look at the trailer here, you can see my headlight tail lights are working. My turn signals are working fine and my brake lights are working. So the trailer's great. We'll just rebind the truck and then we'll have nice wireless lights for the trailer. Okay, to bind these at the same time, I've got a bind plug plugged into my trailer, a bind plug 
plugged into my tractor. So I'll turn the trailer on and the tractor on. I'll do the same thing. I'll hold this down, push in the plug, turn this on, and then I'll pull the bind plug off of each one. And shut them off. Okay, so we've got these bound together. Um, you can see that my headlights and my taillights now on the trailer come on at the same time. There's no connection between the two vehicles. Uh, the turn signals should come on at the same time. Yes, they do. Headlights and taillights will... I'm assuming the brake lights will work, but I can't test those because I want to move the truck. So that looks good. So we'll get back on the trailer here. So all my uh, wiring's in. The receivers are bound, so both the truck and the trailer work at the same time. I've got my two leads coming up here. So now, what I'm going to do, I don't want to use the stakes on the side of this trailer because I have a different purpose uh, for it. I'm going to have a different load. So I'm going to take these, these holes and add a 3mm LED marker light. And they fit perfect. I've got these little uh, LEDs that come with a uh, resistor already soldered in and leads already soldered on. So I'm just going to glue these in at each point. And then, as I mentioned, these have got a slot underneath them for the wires to run. And so, it should be a simple matter of putting them in like this. And I'll use a drop of uh, clear parts cement on each one. I'll solder all the blacks together and solder them to my, my black lead here. Solder all the orange ones together and solder them to my red. And I should wind up with one, two, three, four, five nice uh, amber marker lights down each side. So I'll get my solder and iron out and get to work. I'm going to glue one of these in just to kind of show what I'm doing. So I'm going to use my, my clear parts cement. Just put some in the LED. And I, I bent the leads down a little bit so the LED will come through straight. And then I've got a little piece of tape. I'll just tape it down to hold it in place. So I'm going to do that. 10 times. Well, I, I tapped all the reds and oranges together and all the blacks together. Um, I didn't, I just twist the wires together, solder them, put a piece of shrink wrap over them. Not super high tech, but it works. I will tape these down with some blue tape. Let's see if it works. So we'll turn on the radio, turn on the trailer here. We'll flip on our lights. And they work. Yeah, that, that looks great. Um, so we've got our tail lights and all our marker lights that come on at the same time. And uh, another cool thing about this little vehicle light set is if you turn the transmitter off, it goes into a display mode. And all the lights that blink just start to flash, and all the lights that stay on with the switch just stay on. So you can display it with uh, with the lights on. Okay, I will tape those down and we will look at doing finishing up this trailer. The finish off the front of the trailer are these uh, these pieces here that that mount right in here that the decking slips under, and they have a short side and a long side, and the long side goes out. So this goes here. I push the plug in, which is just a press fit, and then this bolts through both sections. So I'm going to go ahead and mount that. So the truck kit comes with this strip wood in two different colors, kind of a light color and a darker color. And it just tucks underneath the front here and then lays in. And it comes with a bunch of uh, double sticky tape to run across the top of these to, to tape it in. And that is 
perfectly acceptable to me. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to see how these all fit. I'm not paying any attention to the colors. When I put them in permanently, I'm going to alternate the dark and the light colored wood. But what I really want to do is see how wide I get. Okay. Not enough room to get this final piece in. So, as I showed earlier, these sides are adjustable somewhat. But what I don't want to do is adjust all of it on one side. So, I'm going to move this side out a little bit. I'm actually going to I'll measure this with a micrometer. And I will move this out half the distance and then move this one out, lay the pieces, and tuck it back in. Oh, that's going to look really nice. Now remember these adjustment screws have a captured nut, so all you have to do is loosen them. One thing to be aware of, I needed to remove the front set of wheels to be able to reach this screw. And to be able to reach this screw, I have to remove the rear bumper. Not a problem, I've got plenty of wire, but just something to be aware of. Well, that adjustment worked. I've got uh, the decking fits in there great. Now I've decided I'm going to stain it before I put it in. So I'm going to pull these pieces back out and I'll show you how I do that. So what I've done is I just took a piece of cardboard, put some T-pins in it just to kind of hold this together. It doesn't have to be real tight. I've got some uh, Rust-Oleum uh, Golden Mahogany Stain and a cheap Harbor Freight chip brush that I can throw away. And I'll just put some of this on here, and it's uh, it's fine if it gets down in between the boards. What I really don't want to do is get it on my my nice work mat. That's why the cardboard. Plus, it holds the pins. So I'll just go ahead and spread this on, and then I'll come back. So I've just uh, basically thickly brushed on the stain and then I just wipe it off with these blue paper towels and the wood soaked it up nicely. Actually really soaked it up. This wood is really took a lot of it. And here's something that's interesting. The, the wood get in here. the wood that was lighter is now darker and the wood that was darker is now lighter because the because the lighter wood was actually soaked up the stain a little better. So you can see the two colors. I left them in, in batches here. So I'm going to finish wiping this down. I'll probably go through three or four towels and just wipe it all up. I think that looks really nice. Way better than just the bare wood. And there we go. There's the wood all ready to use. Um, normally I wear plastic gloves, I forgot, so I'm going to have a nice golden tan on my hand for a few days. Um, so I'm going to let that dry for a little bit and then we'll put that wood on. The fun part, I've laid out the uh, decking the way I want it, alternating the colors. So I'm going to start at this edge and work that direction. I've also put the double sticky tape on here. So I'm going to go ahead and peel that off and we'll get going. Tape's off. Uh, the only real trick with this decking is up in the front here, it tucks underneath. And then in the back, you just have to line it up with 
the back edge. The first piece is always the tricky one. Okay, then we just work down from there. I'm particularly careful about the back end here because that's what shows and then getting each piece really tight to the next one and uh, man get a lot of really good looking trailer done really fast with this Okay, well there's the first little bit. I'm going to go ahead and finish laying that on. Well, the pieces are on, and just like that, it's done. Um, you can see how the decking turned out. Man, <laughs> I'm really happy with this. It looks fantastic. Um, you see the running lights? I couldn't be more pleased. It's a very uh, easy to build kit, too. It's a great one for, uh, for getting started in trucks. I'm going to clean off my bench. I'll take some uh, beauty shots of it and uh, hook it up to the glow liner and see how it looks. Well, here's the uh, completed trailer. I like this kit. It's easy to build and it just looks fantastic. Um, obviously, we've got our, our side marker lights and our, uh, our tail lights all working. And you'll notice there's no wires between the, the truck and the trailer. I'm going to... Um, fire up the truck, hook these together, and um, test out all the lights. Well, there's the, uh, the globe liner with the trailer. You can see my, my cab lights, headlights, marker lights all come on at the same time. My turn signal on my truck works. I love this truck. I absolutely love it. Um, yeah, it just looks really great with the trailer behind it. You can see the, uh, the trailer lights working and the flashers here. Um, yeah, so there we go. The Tamiya flatbed trailer kit. Pretty easy build. I think it turned out really well. I uh, want to thank you for watching. I'm um, going to do some more trailers. I'm going to take a Tamiya flatbed trailer kit and convert it into a lowboy. So that'll be coming up. Um, I've got a couple other things to do first. But as always, I appreciate you watching. Uh, check out my website. Uh, email me if you have questions. Check out our Facebook page. Just search for Tamiya Truck Open Studio. And uh, have fun building trucks. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe and give me a like.